moving on to private members' business, and specifically a motion re home care and support services. I move the motion, Les uh, Concorla. Minister, there is a growing crisis in Ireland today that is affecting families the length and breadth of the country. The difficulty in accessing home support for older people is, after housing, one of the most biggest issues coming into my constituents' office every week. It is a problem that is causing enormous stress for families, and this is the basis for the private members' bill that I and my colleagues in the regional independent group are putting before you today. There are huge waiting lists for home care packages. The most recent information available from the HSE shows that at the end of March this year, more than 6,400 people were on the waiting list for new or additional home support care. These are often extremely vulnerable people whose need for home care has been proven and accepted by the HSE. Minister, we have all in this House come across cases where older people have had a spell in hospital and are ready for discharge, but they cannot leave because supports are not in place for the subsequent care. Late last month, there were 84 people on what the HSE calls the National Delayed Transfer of Care List, with home as their discharge destination. A further 240 people being kept in hospital were waiting uh, residential care to be put in place. That's 240 people in hospital holding up beds. Unless matters change, the whole situation regarding care of older people will continue to worsen. Last year's census found there were 776,000 people aged 65 and older in the country, an increase of more than one-fifth on the position in 2016. And the number of elderly people aged 80 and older will quadruple over the next three decades to more than half a million people. But today, there is a challenge facing thousands of families across the country which needs to be addressed with urgency. The number of officially recorded unpaid carers increased by 53 per cent between the two most recent census, rising to almost 300,000 last year. Almost 87,000 of those were providing at least 43 hours of care a week, more than double of that in 2016. Last year, a cross-party advisory group was established to try and figure out how to, uh, how to tackle the shortage of care workers for home support services in the nursing home sector. That group came up with 16 key recommendations that they felt could at least alleviate some of the problems, but so far only one of those 16 recommendations have been actually implemented. It involved allowing non-EU home support workers to be employed in home support services. But of the 1,000 work permits permitted, only 84 have actually taken up the opportunity. Why there is so little interest needs to be further examined. Minister, many of the other recommendations of that Strategic Workforce Advisory Group are included in this bill, which I and my colleagues in the Regional Independent Group are putting before the House today. We strongly feel that several steps need to be urgently taken to tackle the problem of a shortage of staff to provide the home care that thousands of people on the waiting list need if they, are to, if they are to continue to live in their own homes and communities. Among the actions that we are proposing is that home support workers should be paid for time travelling between clients and other expenses refunded. We are also seeking in this bill an increase in the means test limits for the carers allowance and review of the rules governing the payment of job seekers benefit for people caring for loved ones in their family. Currently, any amount of hours worked outside of the home while not on caring duties is counted as a full day worked. The rules as they stand say that someone is paid job seekers benefit for the days they don't work, but if they work more than three days, they get nothing. If the rules were changed, at least for those in caring roles, to allow a certain number of hours work over the space of a week, it would facilitate them to supplement their incomes. 
Too many people caring for members of their families rarely get a break. This bill provides for the laying down in law the principle of every carer being entitled to get a minimum number of weeks respite care every year. And I call on the government to support this uh, motion. And unless can call that, I would like to thank uh, Maria Burke and Theresa Delaney and Brendan Carroll in my office for the research that they did on this. And I want to thank Koch, our party administrator, for putting this bill together. Thank you very much.